Hey guys, what's up? Thought I'd show you my uh, little upgrade project here for my uh, ANET printer. Uh, this is actually designed for a Prusa with the uh, linear X-Rail, but uh, this should also work with the uh, ANET, Creality, and uh, TiVo printers, but you'd actually have to do the X-Rail upgrade, but I'll, I'll show you that here in a couple seconds. But So this is a very unique, uh, it's like a Titan Arrow type uh, extruder there. Let me show you some pictures of this thing. And uh, what's unique about this hot end is that it it's all in one unit here. So these the linear rails go through here, and uh, it's I have it's already showed up. It's already on my test bench already, and I've already have it installed. But uh, yeah, I can't stand the the Bowden extruder. That thing just sucks. I I can't deal with that. You can't even print flexible filament with it. You can't print like even abrasive filament. Like, I was trying to print uh, carbon fiber filament, and the filament was just sticking inside the Bowden bo tube. It was just way too abrasive. So, yeah, I got this thing. But in a previous video, I did the X-Rail upgrade. You know, like the linear rail upgrade for the for the X carriage. But um, one of the things I can't stand about the uh, ANET printers, ANET, Creality, um, TiVo, is they all use, like, this wheeled system. Like, the, the rails are just... It, I think that's actually one of the reasons why they don't print very well. But if you look at this, all these printers right here, they all run on this little rail system with these wheels right here. And there's just too much room for slop and error. It, it just, you can't, you're not going to have a good reliable print if it, if the if the carriage is moving around like that, you know. And um, I've never been able to get a, like a super, super good print, you know. Like, my old printer bot, uh, Simple Metal, pr prints incredible. You know, I upgraded the firmware and the linear advance on it, but, I mean, that thing is spot on. But there's no wheels. It's, it's, it's all linear. It's all rails and stuff, so, and linear ball bearings and stuff. But, so, my goal was to, um, you know, I wanted to get something that was definitely more stable, more reliable, and direct drive. So, I was pretty shocked when I saw this thing, you know, and it was 89 bucks, but... It's all in one aluminum, and I'll show you that in a couple of seconds when I go to the test bench. But, uh, yeah, it came with all these wires, and uh, I, you, I ordered my uh, 12 fan and the NTC100K thermosistor. And it actually came with a newer style cartridge uh, uh, thermosistor. So what, that was pretty cool. But, yeah, so my goal is to make my ANET printer into a precision printer. Like, I really, that can print as good as my other printer. Um, so, all right, guys, we'll check it out. Hey, what's up, guys? Check this out. So this just came in from uh, China, ordered a couple weeks ago, and it's a uh, E3D Titan Arrow uh, clone. But uh, I don't know if you guys can see what's unique about this. It's all one aluminum piece. So. This whole piece, like normally a Titan Arrow wouldn't actually be, wouldn't have this like Pusa style linear rail uh, integrated into it. So, um, take a look at this. So normally a Titan Arrow would be like the extruder and the hot end right down here. But uh, yeah, take a look at that. The linear rail, all aluminum one piece. And belt stop right there. So yeah, this was about $89, and it came with thermosistor cartridge style too, that's cool. And, uh, no, it was $89, free shipping, took a couple weeks to get here, but, uh, yeah, it has like a little micro uh, extruder or stepper motor, so it's not the full size stepper motor, yeah, which would normally come out to here, it's actually a lot smaller, it's about half the size, uh, 0 .04, or 0.4. A nozzle that's the heat sink for the uh, hot end right there and that's the I guess, I guess this is called the Titan extruder you know with the uh, gear reduction but yeah I actually I, I just I can't stand a Bowden setup so let me show you my print real quick I just don't like these Bowden setups man they're just I don't know they're sort of annoying and I found out about that when I was trying to, when I was printing out my carbon fiber filament. The filament is so abrasive and so like uh, so brittle, it would snap in here, 
but it couldn't even push in here because it was so so abrasive. It would it was just it didn't want to move in this abodent or the uh, PTF e tubing. So um, plus, I, direct drive just seems way more precise than. Um, the bone. I mean, I know why they do the the bone is so you're reducing the weight up here, so you have less jerk. But I mean, if you get your linear advanced dial in, it's not usually a problem. But yeah, so I'm happy to replace this thing right there. I actually this thing's been out of commission since my last video. So in the last video, I had done the uh, X rail, the uh, X carriage here, and uh, I did the linear rail upgrade from the the wheeled uh, system. But yeah, so like when I saw this. You know, I, I'm. I was like, man, this is this is it. I wanted this thing. So, <laughs> yeah, I couldn't believe it. They actually do sell like a a version of this on Amazon, but I'll, I'll put a link to it. Um, I got this one on eBay, but it was like 400 bucks for this setup, I guess. You know, with all like aluminum here. So, I did print out some. Uh, it, it is actually more difficult trying to find stuff for this thing because it's not exactly the same. Because most of the most of the fan ducting you get for these these. E3D uh, style hot ends or or for like they they come with the whole thing they, they the whole the whole carriage is all one assembly so um, this will go like that so it's a little mountable vent here too that's gonna go around here and this is actually carbon fiber filament here I mean the the the, the filament is actually incredible super super light and super strong but yeah that's gonna fit right in there and it's gonna go over the hot end like that. And then this is going to be for my, uh, the BL Touch will be down here. So I'm assuming it goes like this. Might have to make some mods to that. Or maybe it goes like that. Okay, it goes like that. The BL Touch will be here. So, all right, guys, cool. I'm going to get it going. I'm going to take this off. There's a couple screws, and she'll just be able to pop this off and slide it on, and Get it going. All right, there we go. That's the little belt holder that goes right in there. So have this on. It's very smooth, extremely stable. So this is the. Uh, I mean, if you want to, you want precision, and you want a good looking prints, then this thing has to be precise. You can't have bouncing around. You can't have slop in it. You know, you can't have any of that stuff. You're not gonna have good prints. The, the reason why. I mean, I have an old printer bot that prints incredible, and this thing is never feeling like that good. So, I'm just trying to fix all the little slop issues and just everything to make this thing print good. So, all right, get the uh, belt on there. Pretty nice. All right, so that's the heater block right there. So, I need to get this uh, thing on there right now. This fan shroud. So it's interesting. It looks like they have a couple of uh, a couple nuts on there. Kind of almost like spacers. So actually that might work out perfectly for me with this uh, thing. So all right, get this on right there. All right, that's done with the first phase of the uh, mechanical phase. So next phase will be electrical. I'll have to wire all this in. That's where the BL touch is, is. You know, I have to get rid of the old fans and just rewire this. Also, because the old extruder was right here, I have to move the extruder wire up here to the new, uh, up to this point here. So I have to totally rewire it internally. All right, so now I need to uh, move this uh, extruder wire. See, it's going over here, feeding on this. I'm going to pull it out of the wire. Then i got to feed it up to this bundle that's going to be going up to the hot end here. So it has to actually go up because the extruder and obviously is not used to be here and now it's actually on the uh, X axis. <clears throat> All right, so I got to pull it out, get it going. Awesome. All right, guys. So I don't really like this connector. This just doesn't seem like it would be, a, you know, the right way to go for just passing this super thick heated uh, hot end cord through a tiny connector here. So um, I'm actually going to take this off. Remove this connector, and I'm actually going to have these directly the thermistor and the uh, the uh, hot end directly on the board. So I'm probably eventually a MOSFET, but like I said, I'm, well, I don't know if I told you this, but I'm going to get rid of this whole box here. So I can't stand that box. So, well, eventually I'll be it's only a 32 bit system, but 
for now, I just don't, I mean, it's putting brakes in a wire that's supposed to be controlling resistance, the thermosistor is definitely not a good idea. So, you know, if you're trying, if you're looking for, for precision, that's what I'm doing. You know, any sort of break or compromise in electricity is definitely not good. You gotta remember, this whole thing is controlled by motors. So, all right. Kind of a headache, but I rewired the uh, box here, all the stuff's rewired to go through this cable. I'll show you, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get it up right now. You'll see what I'm talking about. All right. All right, take a look. Got the fan covers on, it's wired up. Extruder wire, hot end wire, thermosistor, a couple fans. Uh, the BL touch. No, I mean uh, the camera. All right. Um, Oh yeah, that's the uh, X stop right there. See it right there? So it hits against that metal thing right there. So that's actually kind of perfect. And that's barely on the bed. <laughs> well, I mean, it's still on the bed. That's cool. I mean, it's barely on the edge, but that's fine. I, I can actually mess with their parameters in uh, Marlin. All right, let's take a look at this. So I'm a little bit worried about this whole thing with the wire management over here hitting this thing. But actually, I'm going to have to, uh, convert this into a camera mount. So I'm actually going to have a camera mount right here eventually, like a Logitech C270. Uh, I already have the camera. It's C270 C Logitech. And it's going to mount right here, and it's going to film the bed like right here, right below it. So I'll figure that out, though. All right, so the next thing I'm going to do now is work on the firmware. Or actually, I should probably power it on. Let's see what's up. Let's give it a test fire here. Okay, fan's working, that's a good sign. That is the uh, extruder cooling fan right there, and this is obviously the blower fan that cools off the part. And I have like that half circle. Oh, I forgot, I gotta put a sock on there too. Um, Alright, let's see if I can. Um... There it goes. Cool guys. All right, back in business. So I can totally. I gotta go back and mess with the firmware. So I'm gonna mess with the firmware, and then once I get the firmware working, then I'll show you what I did. All right. All right. So if I got this thing working, and let's take a look at this thing real quick here. Okay, so uh, there's actually a couple good pages. I'll put some links where you can get them. But there's a couple changes you have to make in Marlin. And this is actually one of them. So I already have the Marlin software open. Control F to find. So I didn't actually have to change this for my printer. It was already uh, it was actually already extruding the right direction. That's What this means is if you're going to have to extrude forward or backwards. If your extruder's not going the right direction, then it's going to have problems. But... Alright, so that, that's pretty basic. Uh, then you're going to have to go to the steps. And let me get back to that page real quick. And this is actually, you need to figure out the information or the specs on your extruder motor. But uh, it's down here. You have to run this this little, uh, you know, little mathematical equation here. But uh, let me do this real quick. I'm going to copy and paste it. Sorry, my eyes are all stingy today. Uh, control F. And so there we go. So for, for my particular motor, I was about 418. And I actually ran that calculation. But let me show you real quick where I got my uh, stepper, stepper information from. So this is the actual motor that came with my uh, clone, sort of cloned uh, Titan Arrow. It's not, the reason why I say sort of clone is because Titan Arrow doesn't actually make a system like mine. The, the extruder, yes, but not the whole mount and everything. So. Uh, E3 doesn't doesn't make a mount like that, so sorry, I got kind of a cold right now too. But um, okay, so th these are the specs. So my stepper motor had uh, 200 uh, steps per revolution. So this little part right here, for one revolution completely around, is 200 steps. So that's actually where you, when you go back to this algorithm, where is it? Uh,
All right, so that's where I actually got that information from right there. So I went back and I ran this equation. So I know my stepper motor is 200 steps per revolution. And I went back and I used this mathematical algorithm right here. See where this says, I guess a standard motor is about 400 steps per revolution. Whereas mine is a little pancake motor and it's a little tiny thin one. And it's 200 steps per revolution. So what I did was I, uh, if you look down here at this equation, so I took 200, I multiplied it by 16, then multiplied it by 3. Then I took 7.3 and, uh, you know, by pi 3.142, then I multiplied that, then I divided it with this, and for me it came out to be 418.54, but I, I just put 418 in there, but... All right, so yeah, I mean it's printing out right now. I'll show you again real quick. It's quality's pretty good, and I'm still gonna dial it in. I haven't messed with the linear advance yet, but you know, and don't forget to upload. Just hit the upload button. Yeah, I'm stoked to get my uh, my big printer again, going again. At least bigger than my printer bot. So I'm actually printing out an LCD cover. I'm actually I can't stand this box down here, so I'm gonna put it up to this LCD thing right here. I'm gonna make it all external, different boxes. So. Printing out, looking good. Tight and narrow. You know, the Chinese special with the all aluminum body there. Alright guys, cool.